This is 100 watts and a wire. So you heard about this double bazooka and you don't know how to build one. No problem. I'll show you how. It's pretty straightforward. Hi, I'm Steve, W7UDI, known as Sidecar Steve here on 100 watts and a wire. Today we'll go over the building of a double bazooka. I'll give you my take, my spin on how I build them. And you can take that and then roll your own and go from there. After uh, a little bit of time and a uh, little patience, you can have your own double bazooka strung up in the trees or up on a mast, and then you can be talking all over the world on it. So come and join me as we build the double bazooka antenna. Okay, we're out here in the shop, so we're going to get ready to get started building our double bazooka. So I did a pre, uh, you know, some prep work here just uh, so you don't see me, you know, measuring out coax and wire and uh, putting a connector on the pigtail here. So this is one of the first things I did, put the connector on here and got that prepped up. So what we have here on the bench, we have our soldering station, we got a heat gun, we got coffee, you need coffee. And then um, my vise, I got uh, 23 feet of coax uh, all ready to go. And the blue tape is where the center of it, and that's, that's gonna be our center section. And then I, uh, the design calls for about five feet of wire and I cut off of seven feet. That way it's always easy to have extra and we can trim it to, uh, when we get it uh, all tuned up and I don't have to pull out the left-handed uh, cable stretcher. And so you're wondering, where do you get all this info? What's the formulas and this and that? And there's plenty of info out there on the internet, but what I found is a place called uh, West Mountain Radio. They got a, uh, a calculator on their website and I just printed this sheet out and it covers all the various bands and the frequencies, gives, me, gives you the dimensions and it's just, why reinvent the wheel? So just, uh, there's a lot of info out there on the internet, uh, you can find it all. And uh, that's what I use, I, that's a good starting point and then uh, been successful with the builds. So let's get building. All right, here we are. We're on the bench now, and so uh, we'll, we'll start off with the uh, the center section, and we'll uh, trim that. One of my favorite tools is a knife, so we'll just kind of trim around the uh, the edge here. Get a uh, gonna open up the uh, the center section here, and this is where we're gonna attach the uh, the coax, the pigtail that we that we made. We'll go ahead and peel off our tape and then we'll go ahead and trim this and then we'll just, it's sticking, and we'll just trim back our, our coax here, our shield here. Off to the side. Another tool that I, I like to use is this electrician scissors. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to now cut the shield here on the uh, on the coax and we're going to separate the two. So you just kind of score it here and uh, we'll go ahead and try to peel all this back. And you don't want to go too deep because you end up, you know, cutting through the, the insulation. So this takes a, a little bit of doing here to try to get it all trimmed. But uh, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to separate the, the two, the shield and the shield here, we're going to separate it in two. And so we're going to have one half going one way and the other half going the other way. Little small cutters will, uh, will also help on this. Another trick is to kind of peel back here. And we'll just trim this up and there we go. And we just peel it back. And then we're gonna have a little tab here or just a little, I twist them up and get them. So now you have, you 
have your uh, your center prepped. So if you do cut a you know into the uh, the center here and expose it, you can just throw a layer of tape over it just to kind of give it a little insulation. So now we go to the uh, to the coax pigtail. I just do a quick measurement here with my scissors. I just score it and then uh, eventually peel it back. So you can use whatever whatever tools you uh, you have available. Um, I just been and then peel it back to oh, this. And then what we're going to end up doing is just bringing this back. You can uh, kind of st strip this out a little bit, but usually I just bring it on back here and. Um, just twist it up because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to solder these two pieces. So what I like to do is just kind of neaten it up a little bit and we'll get a uh, kind of eyeball it. And so right there will be uh, our strip point. You can use uh, wire strippers, which uh, is another way of, uh, or, your, or your scissors. And, uh, and we, you can do that. So what we'll, we'll end up doing is, I like to put a little bit of a bend here. And this is not necessary, but I do it because I like to. I'll throw a small tie wrap on here just to kind of hold everything into place. It's gonna end up getting covered up. You're, never, you're not gonna see it. Only you will know that it's there. And uh, so just to kind of neaten it up and we'll go ahead and trim that. that this will all get covered up with the, uh, with the butyl and the tape. So we'll just kind of set it up here, Oops. get in here and then I'll, I'll twist it. So this is the key right here, and we'll, we'll twist it here, and we'll have that ready to go. Bring the, bring the vise over, you don't need it, but, uh, but it just makes uh, soldering that much simpler. So we'll, we have it there, so, we, so basically what we have is that this side of the uh, double bazooka or the, an the antenna. So think of this as one leg of your dipole. It's the center uh, section is uh, where you're gonna solder it to here. And then the shield goes to the other side and uh, we will, uh, and what we end up doing is we'll just solder those sections and then it will end up getting covered up. So we always talk about that the uh, the double bazooka's weak point is right here. So because what we've done is we've cut off the the braid here, the, the shield, and we reduce the strength of the uh, of the antenna. So now everything, all your stresses are right here. So this is uh, one of the areas why we we need to fortify or beef up uh, when we're uh, you know building this antenna. So now we have that ready. We'll go ahead and uh, and uh, trim things up. We'll put our, our knife away so I don't stab myself. We'll uh, grab our, our cutters here and we'll just kind of trim this excess out of the way. And uh, so now we're now we're ready on the uh, so here we are. It's all ready to so this is the uh, the center section all done ready to go so now we're going to seal it up so i like to use butyl so um one of the things i do is you'll start from the bottom and work your way up so we're gonna we'll cut a little section of butyl out uh, right here and what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to wrap it 
wrap it around the uh, the pigtail, the coax pigtail, and then we'll just uh, we'll come up here and bring this around. And you you don't have to use butyl; you can use whatever you whatever you have. Um, just some rubberized tape like Scotch 23 works pretty good. And then um, so you just kind of form this and uh, and then I'll take another little section of uh, butyl here and we'll doesn't take much you don't need a lot and uh, we'll just cut this section off and then we just lay this over top of it and uh, just like that and this will just kind of help seal up everything here in the center. So there we are. So now we're good. Then we'll take our tape and we'll uh, we'll tape from the bottom up and uh, eventually just put three layers on there. So uh, we'll get back to you after we uh, get it taped up. Work on uh, the termination for the uh, for the end, so we'll go ahead and slide this over, and we'll uh, we'll start on the on the first one. Pretty straightforward. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to uh, we'll strip back a little bit of wire here. We'll use our strippers, and this is just 14 gauge wire antenna wire that I uh, that I use. Um, the the original design calls for um, ladder line or twin lead but uh, I've always just uh, used uh, 14 gauge wire it, it's the antenna is not as broadband as uh, with if you had uh, twin lead but you know for for us it works just fine quick measurement uh, that I use off my scissors so we'll just so we'll strip back the uh, and in this, in the double bazooka design, the, the end of the coax and the center conductor are shorted together. So they are, um, so you feed from the center here and it comes to, to the end here on the, on the, this leg of the coax. And then we'll just, um, so what I end up doing is we'll just strip back the, get all my, scrap pieces there and we'll place you in into the vise and then we will um, bring these guys together kind of do a uh, little bit of a Western Union splice here and um, just and what we're gonna end up doing is we'll just solder clean our soldering iron Now we have the uh, center pin, or the center pin, the center conductor uh, uh, soldered to the antenna wire. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, and I've already just realized I messed something up, and you'll notice here in a second, but it's not a, it's not a big deal on a 20 meter antenna. It's when you start getting into the, four, the 75s and one, 160s, you can put your heat shrink on first, but that's okay. So we'll do the same thing here with the, uh, now we're going to solder the, sh the uh, shield over this connection that we just made with the uh, center conductor. And then the last thing I like to do is uh, go ahead and put a small uh, piece of heat shrink here. So I got uh, a couple different sizes and I like to do is just bring it up to here and uh, this one just goes over the uh, so we'll get it right here and it, this one will just go over the uh, the uh, connection we just made bring out the old heat gun 
heat shrink it and or you know you don't have to heat shrink if you don't have it it's you can use you know tape butyl whatever and then uh, and then we have a nice uh, connection here so let me go ahead uh, you don't need to see the uh, the other half being done so let me get that done and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll we're almost done so we'll be right back all right we got it done we have our uh, our ends uh, completed, both ends, uh, both heat shrink, uh, soldered and heat shrink, so we're ready to go. So now it's uh, how do we deal with the center? And this is what I like to use. I like to use the DX Engineering Universal Wire Antenna Build Kit, and it is basically it's a it's a T, a couple of end insulators some stainless steel hardware which we we're not going to use in uh, in this build so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get this I when I built my first double bazookas I just happened to have a couple of these on hand and it was like oh okay let's figure it out this is uh, has been my go-to I've tried other um, devices where I've tried uh, you know junction boxes I've tried uh, uh, some PVC uh, and I've always just come back to this so it's just uh, it's a pretty neat nice little kit that uh, you get it's about $24 uh, right now but you have your insulators and then you have your centerpiece and it's and this is the key to in my opinion that uh, for the uh, to overcome the deficiencies of the weak point right here on the so I what I do is I just lay this out here and then I'll just take the tie wraps and I just start uh, lacing them through and uh, and the and the uh, T just becomes a uh, basically a, a splint so I'll uh, I'll put three on here on each side and then that uh, basically transfers the uh, the load so the strain that uh, is going to be basically transferred to the uh, to the T so you know just look at it think of it as a splint so we'll just get this all lined up you just kind of center it up and uh, and then I just do the same here on the uh, on the coax and we just uh, so I'll put one through here and uh, it just gets into a, <laughs> a plethora of tie wraps and then um, and then usually I'll put one one around the the center here that's so all I'll end up putting three on the uh, on the do these three holes and we'll just go ahead and trim these off I'll, I'll finish them up uh, after the fact so we'll just trim these down and so then you you have that and then right here you have a you got a, a place to uh, support the uh, the center of the antenna if you're going to set it up into a uh, into a you know inverted V or whatever and then uh, you just hook up your coax here, and away you go. So this is my take on the uh, on the double bazooka. There are many out there. Um, I just kind of found that this worked uh, the best for for me. Um, it's been successful. The first two I built have been in service uh, up in the air uh, since uh, 2015. So uh, so this is the sidecar double bazooka. Take it for what it's worth. Um, come up with your own twist, your own design. I'm just showing you one way of many. There are just uh, hundreds of ways of building this antenna, but I found uh, this to be pretty successful. And uh, so hopefully I've demystified uh, the double bazooka build for you. It, it's not that complicated it just takes a few steps a little bit simpler than a, a little bit sim the dipole is a little bit simpler but it's just a take on the die on the uh, on the dipole but uh, you can do it little soldering skills a little patience and uh, you can have yourself a double bazooka 
So thanks for uh, being here. I appreciate it. And uh, look forward to catching you on the air with your double bazooka. 7-3.